So we're there in Daniel chapter 12. If you can have a look at verse 8, we'll read from verse 8, Daniel chapter 12. The Bible says there, And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So have a look there at verse 10. We have a prophecy about what it's going to be like in the end times. And there's a few things that we can look at in that verse and understand that's going to happen in the end times. First of all, we see many will be purified and made white in the end times. So we can see there there's going to be a lot of soul winning happening in the end times. In the last days, there's going to be a soul winning movement in the earth because many people will be purified and made white. And I like to think that we play a small part in that. New Life Baptist Church in the end times, seeing many people saved and, and made white, purified. So we know in the end times, there's going to be soul winning going on. There's going to be a great movement of soul winners in the earth in the end times. And also we see that many also shall be tried. It's going to be a trying time in the end times. We know that God's people will be tested and persecuted and tried. So we can expect there to be some trying times to come in the end times. But also we see that the wicked will do wickedly. So the wicked people in the end times are going to continue to be wicked and do wickedly. It's not going to change. There's going to be many wicked people in the world in the end times. And also we see there that the wicked shall not understand. The wicked aren't going to be a people of understanding in these end times. And if you look at the wicked people now in the world, they don't understand the times. They have no understanding of what's, what God's doing in the world. You have wicked people going on about all sorts of crazy philosophies and, and crazy um, ideas they have to try and solve the world's problems, but they lack understanding. They, they go on about climate change and global warming, and this is what that they think they, they need to do to try and fix the world's problems, and they're trying to bring the governments together and, and do all these sort of things, but they imagine a vain thing. The rulers of this world, they imagine a vain thing, so that they do not have understanding. But it says there, but the wise shall understand. That's a prophecy about God's people in the end times. The wise shall understand. Like we will have some understanding in the end times. And the title of my sermon is, The Wise Shall Understand. So we read here in the Bible that in the end times, there's going to be those believers who are wise and they have understanding. That, that should be us. That should be you. We should make sure that we are going to be these people here that Daniel is prophesying about. It's talking about us. The wise shall understand. So it's going to be those people in the end times who actually do understand the ways of God, who do understand the signs and, and the seasons which are happening, and that ought to be us, ought to be God's people. If you can turn to Matthew chapter 16, keep your place there in Daniel. We will turn back to Daniel a couple of times later in the sermon. So turn to Matthew chapter 16. And if we want to live victorious Christian lives in these end times, we need to have some understanding. And God has given us so much revelation, so much information in the Word of God that we're without excuse for not understanding God's time. So we can have a great understanding of the signs and the seasons. And God wants us to have that understanding. And let me read to you a couple of verses while you're turning to Matthew chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13 says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. So if you have some understanding, well, you can be a happy person. Like We need to have understanding of God's ways if you're going to be happy in these end times or at any time in history. You need to have understanding. Proverbs 19 verse 8 says, He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. So you're going to do well in life, you're going to find good in life if you can get yourself some understanding. Look, understanding is not automatic. You don't automatically get understanding once you're saved. But once you're saved, you understand salvation. You have understanding about how to be saved, but then you need to continue on and be a wise person and get yourself some understanding about the things of God. And if you can do that, you're going to have a happy life in the end times and you're going to find good in the end, even in the trying times of the end times, if you have understanding, you can find good and you can find happiness and you can be an overcomer in the end times. And, and Jesus expects us to have understanding. Have a look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 1. 
and we're going to see Jesus rebuke some people for their lack of understanding. And Matthew 16 verse 1 says, The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting desired that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. So he's rebuked these Pharisees and Sadducees because they could not discern the times. They lacked understanding and Jesus rebuked them. Like the Son of God is standing right there in front of them and he's first coming to the world and talking to them and they're just oblivious. They can't discern that this is the Son of God. It's it's his first coming to the world and they can't understand. They've they've missed it altogether and Jesus rebuking them for their discerning, for their lack of discernment. But guess what? Jesus is going to come back again sometime in the future, maybe sooner than later. We don't know for sure and we want to make sure we have some understanding about these things. We don't want to be caught in the dark and get rebuked by Jesus when he turns up and we're not ready. Like we're saved, we're going to go to heaven in the rapture, it's going to be fantastic, but we need to have some understanding if we're going to be victorious in the end times. And these Pharisees, they totally blew it. But if, you're, if you are wise, you will have understanding. And that's what it means to have wisdom to be wise. It means you're a person of understanding. We're going to see that more if we, when we go through some more scriptures. We're going to see that connection between wise and wisdom and having understanding. So it doesn't mean a wise person is just wise because they have memorized wikipedia or they've memorized the encyclopedia that doesn't make someone wise someone's wise when they have understanding and a wise person is measured by their understanding of the things of god that's how you can measure a wise person how wise are they in the things of god how much understanding do they have of the scriptures now if you can turn to psalm 111 so what i want to do in this sermon is is look at the connection between wisdom and understanding and look at well what does that wise person look like and hopefully when we describe this wise person with understanding i'll be describing you and hopefully describing me and also i want to look at how we can then get wisdom how can we become a person of understanding and then how that's going to help us in the end times so while you're turning to psalm 111 i just want to read to you from isaiah chapter 2 And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and this is a prophecy about Jesus, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So Jesus, of course, is the most wisest person to ever live and walk on planet Earth. And the Bible says here that the Spirit of wisdom and understanding shall rest upon him. So there's a connection between having wisdom and understanding that they go together and of course jesus had the most understanding of of any man and he had the most wisdom as well so we see those two go together and now what i want to do is is look at what does this wise person look like and let's describe the wise person that has understanding so you're, you're there in psalm 111 have a look at verse 10 and hopefully like i said we'll be describing you Okay, so we can measure ourselves against the word of God and see how we can compare. And of course, we can always do better. We can always have more wisdom and more understanding. And Psalm 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. So we see there the person that has any wisdom at all is the person that fears God. Like true wisdom starts with fearing God. That's where it begins. So if you don't fear God, look, you've got no wisdom, no real wisdom that's going to be pleasing to God. So unless you've got the fear of God, you can't even get 1% on your wisdom test. You can't even score this the lowest mark. But if you fear God, at least you you can get some percentages out of 100. You can get some marks on the board. And we need to fear God. So when you look at these wicked people in the world that lack understanding, look, do you think they fear God? Do you think the Bill Gates and the Rockefellers and the and the prime ministers and the presidents in the world, do you, do you think they fear God? No, they don't, they don't fear God at all. And that's why the Bible says the wicked shall not understand. They do not have any understanding. They're, they're wicked people and they've got, they haven't got the answers. Like The answers are, are right here. And the wise shall understand. The wise shall understand. And if you do have wisdom, you are going to be that person that fears God. Okay. And also, what else are you going to do? 
uh, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So if you have any understanding at all, any wisdom, look, you're going to know, look, I need to obey this book. I need to keep the commandments. That's, that's a wise thing. If you have understanding, it's going to be evident in your life that you're seeking to follow this book. This is going to be your, your guide in life and you're going to seek to obey the commandments of God. And if a person has understanding, that's what they're going to be doing. Okay, So look, if you don't care for the word of God, if you don't care to, to read it, to follow this and make sure that this is your, your guide in life, this is the word by which you live by in life, that tells me you're lacking a bit of understanding about what's important in life. That shows me like you're not being very wise. Okay, The wise person is going to follow the commandments of God. Now turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4. So we're seeing that the wise person looks like someone who, first of all, fears God, and that's evidence in their life by them reading the Word of God, obeying the commandments, and seeking to do those things which are contained in the Word of God. And Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6 says, Keep therefore and do them, that's the commandments, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So the other nations are going to look at Israel when they're doing the right thing, that is, when they're keeping the commandments and say, look, this is a wise nation, because the other nations can look at Israel and say, look, they're keeping the commandments of God, they're wise. And now apply that to your personal life. Like you should have other people looking at you and thinking, well, this person's a wise person. Look, I may not agree with them, but I can see that they're living a wise life and they're, and they're living a life of integrity. And you, the reason you are is because you're keeping the commandments of God and that's going to keep you walking with integrity. And other people can look at you and realise, well, that's a wise person. And when, they, uh, when their chips are down, when there's problems, look, they're going to go talk to you because they know you're a wise person. Like, in the sight of the nations, people will look at you if you have understanding and realise, well, this person's making some good decisions. Like, they know they're making... Look, people can see the decisions you make as far as not partying, not drinking, not fornicating, going to church, and people may be offended and, and disagree with your stance, but they're going to look at you and look, that's right. Like, they're making good decisions. Like, it's pointless going out partying and, and getting drunk and getting hang, hang, having hangovers and, and waking up next to some person you shouldn't be waking up to and ending up in places you shouldn't be. Like, people understand, look, this is a foolish life. And they look at you as you're keeping the commandments and they go, look, that's a wise person. I wish I could be like them. And that's, what, that's how people think. They might not come and tell you that, but when you talk about you know, what you do on the weekend, you say, look, I went to church, and what's wrong? You don't, don't you go out partying? Say, no, I don't want to do that. That's, that's nonsense. Like, there was a lady at work this week, and she'd be like 70 now, and she was talking about girl, when she was younger, going out and partying and, and, and waking up next to some person and realising, oh, what was I thinking? You know, I must have been drinking. And then she was, Didn't, did you do that, Jason? Said, no, didn't do that. So, oh, well, that was a long time ago when I did that. No, this wasn't my scene. Like, it's foolish. Like, we shouldn't be doing that. People should be looking at your life and going, look, they've done things right, you know. And if you have understanding, if you're a wise person of understanding, people are going to look at you and realise, well, that, that person's making some good life decisions. Okay, so we can see there that you'll fear God, you'll keep the commandments, and other people will look to you and realise you're doing a good job. Now turn to Daniel chapter 2. Back to Daniel again. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 20. And Daniel, isn't he? He's a man that had great understanding about the things of God and the, and the timing of God and the times and the seasons. Daniel 2 verse 20 says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons, he removeth kings and setteth up kings, he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things, he knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. So it says there in verse 21 that he gives knowledge to them that know understanding. So if you know understanding, you're that wise and understanding person, God's going to give you more understanding. He's going to give you more knowledge, and you're going to increase in your understanding. So it's not just like you, you get to one place of understanding and that's enough. If God sees you that you do Seek after understanding, seek after true wisdom. He's going to give you much more than you asked for. And that's like Daniel's testimony. 
Remember, Daniel is, we're going to look at this in a moment, he's seeking to understand the times and he understands these things and then God sends him an angel to help him to understand things even clearer and gives him much more than he could ever imagine that he would understand. So we see that if you do have that understanding already, you're going to increase more and more and more in understanding. God's going to bless you and give you so much more. Now turn to Deuteronomy chapter 32. And we'll just continue to look at what this wise person looks like. So he looks like someone who fears God, keeps the commandments, and he's increasing in the knowledge of God. He's increasing in understanding. And Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. So someone who lacks understanding, they're that sort of person that they don't think about the long-term consequences of their actions. And don't we, don't we see that today, especially with young people just doing stupid things on social media um, and just out and about, you just see people just being foolish. They're not thinking about the latter end because they think they're young, invincible, their life's going to go on forever. But the person who's understanding, who has understanding, they're going to be thinking about the long-term consequences. And look, as believers in the end times, look, we have, the understanding we have is, look, I'm thinking about the millennium, I'm thinking about the he new heavens and the new earth. Even Abraham, back in like thousands of years ago, he's looking forward to the new Jerusalem. He's a man of understanding and he's looking forward to such things as even beyond the millennium. So we need to be having a, an understanding and looking forward to the future and understanding how our actions now are going to affect our lives in the future, not just 10, 20, 30, 40 years' time, but actually in the millennium, in, in the new heavens, in the new earth. If you have understanding, well, these things are going to be on your mind. You're going to be looking long-term into the future. And I just want to encourage like, our young people, just to get yourselves around some the Word of God, get yourself some understanding and think long-term. Just don't think about your life because this is just like a vapour, isn't it, your life now? It's like a, a drop in the ocean, your life right now. So think beyond your life right now. Enjoy your life now, live it to the fullest for God, but have the understanding that there's so much more to come. And if you are the person of understanding, you're going to be thinking about the future and you're going to be making decisions now in light of eternity, in light of the things to come. And don't be that person that, that turns away from the Bible. Look, my, my greatest fear for the young people in this church is, is when they become 18, 19 and 20, look, they turn away from the Bible. And if you do that, like, that means you lack in understanding, you're making bad decisions and you're not thinking about the long-term consequences. So get the Word of God into your heart now, get yourself some serious understanding about the future and then you're going to continue on and serve God and you're going to be blessed beyond your wildest dreams. And Psalm 107 and verse 43, if you can turn there. Psalm 107, verse 43. That's why we're so blessed to have New Life Baptist Church. Like, we're a church that talks about the things that matters. We're not talking about how just to live your best life now. We're not talking about how to get rich in this life. We're talking about things that, that matter, the eternal things, the things in the scriptures. And you can gain a great understanding beyond what many adults, many other believers can have because you're in a church where the word of God is valued and wisdom and understanding are taught. So listen very carefully to the, um, the preaching, read the Bible yourself, young people, and you can gain great understanding, which is going to cause you to have a happy, blessed life in this life and also in the age to come, um, eternal life and many rewards and, and greater blessings that we can't even wrap our heads around, heads around at the moment. Another blessing of being that person of understanding is this in 100, Psalm 107 verse 43 says, Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. If you have understanding and wisdom, one thing that you can then understand is the loving kindness of God towards you. Like you might just gloss over that and think, oh, I know God loves me and that's fantastic. But you can like really experience it deep down in your soul how much God loves you. You can understand the loving kindness of God towards you. Like don't discount that at all. Think about that. Like you can understand how much God loves you. And look, that's, that's incredible to know that you're loved by God no matter what. As a saved person, you're always going to be his and you can always just be loved by God. He, he will never forsake you, never stop loving you. Look, 
He can be displeased with you at time, at, from time to time when you do dumb things, but God still loves you. And that's why he'll discipline you and, and get you back on track so you can be a partaker of his holiness and be blessed. But you can understand the love that God has for you. And what's I think it's in John 17, it talks about the same love that the Father has to, to Jesus can be towards you. You know, you can understand that like the Father just loves you as much as he loves his son Jesus because you're also one of his sons and one of his daughters. And the love and kindness of God is something you can understand. Like, look, that can carry you through life. You know, this is the joy that comes from knowing that you're loved by God. Like, who cares what happens in this life knowing that you're accepted, you're loved by God, and you're pleasing to him? Look, incredible. You know, don't discount that. Don't pass over that too quickly. So there are just some things there about the life of the person who has understanding. They're going to know they're loved by God. And look, that's going to be their strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Like that gives you a lot of joy to know you're loved by God. Like, wow. And you're going to be a person that keeps the commandments. If you, if you have understanding, you're going to realize, well, I better live by the, the commandments of God. Like, God's right. I'm going to keep the commandments. And if you love God, Jesus will keep, keep my commandments, you know. And also you're going to be a person that's going to then continue to increase in the knowledge of, of the Lord and increase in understanding. So then how do you get understanding? How do you become that wise person who we just described? Well, if you can turn to James chapter 1. And I'll read to you from Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 5 says, O ye simple, understand wisdom and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. We want people to be of an understanding heart. When we go soul winning, we go in the door-to-door soul winning, we see some simple people, don't we? We see some foolish people. And we want them to have some understanding. We want, them to, we want to bring the gospel to them so they can at least understand the gospel and get saved. You fools and you simple people, get yourselves an understanding heart. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But the first point, I've got three points here about how we can become wise and get some understanding, is by, first of all, asking God for it. Ask God for some wisdom. Ask God for some understanding. And James chapter 1, verse 5 says... If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. That's pretty easy. Just ask God for wisdom and he'll give you wisdom. You can do, anyone can do that. Like children, ask God for wisdom and he'll give you great wisdom, even as a, at a young age. Like there's no reason why you can't have great wisdom at a young age, especially um, being in a Christian family, being in these churches that we're in, New Life. Baptist Church and um, Blessed Hope Baptist Church, like you can have great understanding and wisdom. Verse 6, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So we need to ask in faith. And God promises he'll give you wisdom. So you can get wisdom by asking. So turn to uh, 1 Kings chapter 3. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. And look, a great example of someone asking for wisdom, like, of course, is who am I, who, children, who, am I, who do you think I'm going to talk about? Someone who asked for wisdom in the Bible. Solomon, that's right, Solomon. So 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 7, we're going to read about Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 7. And now, O Lord my God, this is Solomon praying to God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child, I know not how to go out or come in. So here's Solomon as a child asking for wisdom. So children, ask God for wisdom and he'll give it to you. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this lie so great a nation? So Solomon's asked God for wisdom and we know the story that God gives him like tons of wisdom to the point that he becomes the most wisest man on the earth. And as well as giving him that understanding and wisdom, he gives him the life of his enemies, he gives him great riches and, and, and children and just many, many blessings because he sought after the right thing. And it's no wonder that Solomon said this. I'll just read it to you in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. This is what Solomon said. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with, I love this. And with all I getting, get understanding. So we spend our life 
getting a lot of things, don't we? You're spending lives getting a paycheck, getting food, getting healthy, getting fit, but get understanding. Solomon says, in all you're getting, get understanding. And how do you get understanding? Well, first of all, ask God for it. So young people, in all you're getting in life, don't forget to get, get yourself some understanding. Get yourself some understanding and you'll be happy, you'll be blessed, and you'll do good in life, and you'll understand things in the end times. You'll understand the times and the seasons of the Lord. And how else can you get understanding? Well, you can get understanding by hanging around other wise people, by hanging around people who, who have understanding, who have wisdom. So Proverbs, if you can turn to Proverbs chapter 1, and I'll read to you from Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. It says, A he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So be careful who you hang around. Like if you hang around wise people, you'll, it's going to rub off on you and you'll start to become wise as well. And if you hang around with fools, then they'll rub off on you and you'll start to become a fool. So make sure in the people that you hang around, we hang around some wise people. So in church is where you can find some wise people. In New Life Baptist Church, you can find some people with some understanding. And if you hang around them, talk to them, spend time with them, go soul, soul winning with them, you're going to get yourself some understanding and you're going to become a wise person as well. So don't ever get in the habit of skipping church, get yourselves to church, hang around wise people and you're going to become wise and you're going to get yourself some understanding. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5 says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels so an understanding person he's going to want to increase in understanding like we looked at before like daniel was talking about um, how he was increasing in understanding what god promised him to give more more knowledge to his understanding and if you are a wise person you're going to attain unto wise counsels you're going to seek out those people that can give you wise counsel and that's like in church that's right that's about meeting up with with people like some of the men we meet up for the Bible study on Thursday mornings and we seek under people with wise counsel. We can ask questions and we discuss the scriptures and hopefully, God willing, we're going to increase in wisdom and understanding. And Proverbs chapter 1, verse 6 says, To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. So we're going to be able to understand the words of the wise, understand dark sayings, which will be hid from people who don't have the wisdom of God. In Nehemiah, I just read Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8 to you, says, So they read in the book of the law of God distinctively and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So when we come to church and we hear preaching, it's the job of the preacher to cause the people to understand to have an understanding of the word of God. And if we come around wise counsel, hang around with people in church, we're going to hear preaching and then the preacher is going to help you to understand the scripture. So it's not just about people quoting the Bible and just giving you a whole heap of Bible verses, which is, which is fantastic, it's good, but you also need to have the preacher then, then to expound that and to make sure that even the youngest person can understand what's being preached. We're not trying to be intellectuals and preach things which are all philosophical and no one can understand. We're not trying to impress people by our, our um, knowledge. We want people to understand the scriptures. That's the preacher's job. That's the pastor's job is to cause people to have an understanding and break things down and make things simple to understand. Look, that's one gift that Brother Callum is very good at. Like, he can make things simple to understand. Hopefully, I make, I'm doing a good job too in helping people to understand what, what we're looking at here. And Proverbs 12, verse 11 says, And the opposite is true. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. So when you see people who are just hanging out with people which are just idiots and drop kicks and, and just silly people, look, it shows that look, you lack understanding to hang around those people. Okay? Look, we go out, we meet all sorts of people and we go soul winning, but we're not going there to, to, to seek these people, to fellowship with them, to hang out with them. We want to get them saved. We want to bring some understanding of the gospel to them, help them to be saved. Now, if you can turn to Psalm 119, Psalm 119 now, so the first way we can get wisdom is to ask God for it. And he promises to, to give us that wisdom. And the second way we can get wisdom and understanding is hang around people who are wise and they will become wise as well. 
uh, example, going to church, hearing good preaching. And the third way we, be- we can become wise and have understanding is, of course, by reading the Word of God. And me to you from Psalm, uh, Psalm 19, verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So if you just read your Bible, like you're going to start to score points on that wisdom test. You're going to start to gain understanding and, and understand wisdom and increase in the knowledge of God. And you're going to become a wise person. If you just read the Bible and nothing else, you're going to gain some understanding, gain some knowledge. Because the word of God is sure, making wise the simple. Now, Psalm 119, you, you're there. If you can turn to verse 99. Now, have a look at this. This is a great promise here about reading the word of God. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. So if you meditate in the testimonies of the Lord, uh, read the word of God, you can have more understanding than your teachers. Well, that's a promise of God because it's full of true wisdom, full of the wisdom from the Lord, and you can gain great understanding. Now turn back to Daniel chapter 9. Now let me read you another great verse about how the scriptures can make you wise. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, I'll read this one to you while you turn to Daniel chapter 9. 2 Timothy 3.13 says, And that from a child... Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So Timothy, from a child, he grew up hearing the, the, the Scriptures, the scriptures, the, the testimonies of the Lord, the Word of God, and when he became old enough, like he could use that knowledge that he had of the Scriptures to make it wise, easier for him to get saved. So he's able to get saved because he already had that knowledge. That's why it's so important as parents, as soon as our children can comprehend things, we need to be teaching them the word of God. It's going to make them wise unto salvation. Now, I just want to quickly share a little bit about my testimony because this played a part in in me getting saved because from a young child, probably about nine or ten, my mum got saved. So then I had like a uh, like a bi- influence of the Bible and scriptures came into my life. And I used to like hear, hear a lot of Bible stories and, and read the Bible. And we had a King James in the house. I used to read Revelation and, and I had some understanding of the scriptures. But for me personally, look, I didn't know if this was true or not. But I thought well, it could be true. I don't want to discount it. So I, I, like, I made a habit of just getting some Bible knowledge. But just in case it was true, I wanted to, you know... Um, believe it if it was true. Like I was scared maybe hell's real, you know, I don't want to go to hell, so maybe it's, but I, need, I need to entertain the scriptures. And I was able to understand some Bible verses and this made me wise later for salvation. So when it came to a time when I was 19 and I started to stop and, and ponder on these things and think about our creation and the way of, of the world, the way things were, I was able to draw on that knowledge of the Bible that I used to have, I had when I was younger, and then it just dawned on me, like, you know what? The God of the Bible is real. Just thinking about creation, it just all clicked, fell into place. And I thought, this is true. This is all true. I believe it now. I'm convinced. And for me at that time, I thought, well, that means I'm a Christian. So I called up my mum. I said, look, mum, I got some good news because she'd been praying for me for years. And I said to mum, look, I'm a Christian now. And she said, oh, did you ask? And I think she said, something, what, did you believe in Jesus or did you ask Jesus into your heart? Something like that. And I said, Oh, no, but I believe the Bible. She said, look, what you need to do now, Jason, is uh, forget the exact words. It might have been, call upon the name of the Lord. You need to put your faith in Jesus or, or ask Jesus into your heart. Something like that. And I thought, okay, well, I believe the Bible. I believe it's all true. And then I was thinking about what I knew about Jesus, like he died on the cross for our sins, rose from the dead, because that made me wise under salvation because I already had that knowledge. And then when it dawned on me that God was real, then I put my faith in Jesus. I thought, look, this is true. And then I believed in my heart that God sent Jesus, died for my sins, rose from the dead, then I called upon the name of the Lord and got saved at that moment. So the scriptures made me wise unto salvation. And we need to make sure that our children, they have that Bible knowledge. So when the time comes, hopefully it's when they're super young still, like four, five, six, seven, as soon as they can understand these things, they can get saved. But if not, till a bit later, at least they have that information about the Bible that can make them wise unto salvation. So, so reading the word of God is going to give you understanding and give you wisdom. So look at Daniel chapter 9 and verse 1. Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. It's, we're looking at how Daniel got understanding from the Bible, from the scriptures. In the first year of Darius, the son of Asherus, of the seed of the Medes, 
which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, have a look at this, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So how did Daniel get his understanding? By reading the Bible. He's studying the scriptures, he's reading the book of Jeremiah and he reads in here about the 70 years. So he could discern the times that he's in. He's probably at about the end of that 70 years. So he's reading Daniel and realises, well, we should be praying to get out of here. 70 years is just about up. And then he goes on and he does start to pray to be sent out of the children of Israel, to be sent out of Babylon. And he got that wisdom from studying the word of God. And that's what God expects us to do. We don't want to wait for an angel to come and give us special wisdom. That would be, be wrong. That would be something crazy, something bad. You know, like that's what the Pentecostals do. They come up with all these goofy ideas. But God expects us to study the scriptures and get our understanding from the word of God. This is where we get our understanding about the end time events. This is where Daniel got the understanding from for the time he lived in. It didn't just magically happen. Like he was a student of the word of God. That's how he got his understanding. Like he wasn't just someone that read the verse of the day and that was enough. Like he's someone that, that dug into the word of God and studied it and God blessed him abundantly for that. He could discern the times that he was in because he was a, a student of the word of God, a diligent student of the word of God. And now just turn to chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10 and verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, this is when the angels came to him. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come, I am come for thy words. So as soon as Daniel set his heart to understand by reading the scriptures, like that pleased God. God saw that, and then God sent an angel, I think it might have been Gabriel, to come and give him greater understanding. But that was after he was reading the scriptures, studying the word of God, and God helped him and increased his understanding. And that's one of the benefits. It's one of the blessings that's going to come when you have understanding. God's going to give you more understanding through the word of God. And that was a special experience that Daniel had by the angel coming to speak to him. And we shouldn't be expecting those sort of uh, experiences. We should be just getting that from the word of God. Daniel was like an, a special prophet that was writing the scriptures. So God gave him that, those, those special experiences to help him to write the book of Daniel. But we can see here that he increased in, in that knowledge. Now have a look at Daniel chapter 10, um, uh, verse 21. Just jump down to verse 21, Daniel 10 verse 21. Have a look at this. But I will show thee that which is noted in this scripture of truth that there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. So even the angel is showing him what's in the scriptures, what's in the scripture of truth. He's not giving him extra biblical crazy revelation. He's showing him what's already in the scriptures, okay? So it's in the scriptures that we are going to get understanding. And now what I want to do now is show you some people in Jesus' time who understood. We looked at how the Pharisees and the Sadducees lacked discernment lacked understanding, but there were some people that did discern the times and realised that this is the first coming of Jesus Christ and they were there waiting and they were ready. And then we're going to look at it a bit later, how we can understand, well, this is the second coming of Jesus Christ and we can be ready, um, like to the day, eventually, <laughs> when that seven years starts. So anyway, so have a look at Luke chapter 2 and these are some great stories in the Bible. It goes to show that people can always have had understanding when significant things are going to happen. Like when Jesus' first coming happened, people knew that. They were ready. They were waiting. And, and let's have a look at Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Look at a couple of people here. Luke chapter 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. So here's a man who's waiting for the consolation of Israel. He knows it's the time of the, the first coming of the Messiah and he's waiting and he's full of the Holy Ghost. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That's an amazing promise from the Holy Spirit. And he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the Lord, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, 
Lord, now let if thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. So he knew it was the time for Jesus to come and he's there waiting. And guess what? The first coming of Jesus appears. He sees Jesus as a baby and he says, Look, Lord, you've been faithful. Your promise to me has come to pass. Here's Jesus. I've seen him. Now I can depart in peace. How did he know that? Well, from reading the scriptures. Daniel chapter 9. It gives you to the year of when Jesus is going to arrive or when he's going to die. So these, if people are wise, like they would knew that. Like the Pharisees, they could have understood too, but they were, couldn't discern. And Jesus rebuked them. But this man, he had understanding from studying the book of Daniel. Okay? And guess what? We can study the book of Daniel as well, and we can have a pretty good understanding of when Jesus is going to come the second time. We'll look at that in just a short time. Nearly done. Now turn to verse 36, Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Another person is waiting for Jesus. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asa. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him unto all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So Anna's serving God in the temple and one day the Messiah turns up and she speaks of him to those people looking for redemption. And she's like, well, that baby, that's the Messiah. That's the one that's going to redeem you from your sins. And she was waiting and she knew the time was right. She could discern the times and the season and she had understanding from reading the scriptures. So we can have, like, they had great understanding. These people knew when Jesus was going to come. And now, and, and Jesus would have us also to have understanding. Turn to Matthew chapter 24. So Jesus would have us to have understanding. We don't want to be ignorant of these things. Remember, the sermon's called, The wise shall understand. If you're in the end times, which we are, the wise shall understand the times and the seasons. We can have great understanding. And Jesus would have us to understand end time events. Matthew 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. So Jesus wants us to understand these things. Like so many preachers and churches don't care to preach about end times. They think, well, that's a waste of time. Don't worry about the end times. That's going to get you all bogged down and you're never going to be able to work it out. But Jesus says, let him who readeth understand. We need to understand these things and Jesus wants us to have an understanding. And if we have an understanding, it's going to make it easier for us in the end times if we understand that the, why that certain things are happening. So turn back now to verse 4, Matthew 24, verse 4. When we have an understanding of these events, it's going to cause us to still overcome, to still have good courage and be a good cheer and um, still be blessed in these end times. But Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So Jesus is saying, don't be troubled. And if you have understanding, you're not going to be troubled when you see all these wars and rumours of wars and pestilence and earthquakes. You're going to be excited because you know that time's coming. The time's coming of Jesus' second coming. And you won't be troubled. You'll be full of faith. You'll be excited at the things which are going to come upon the earth. Now, turn back to Daniel and chapter 12 where we started. Daniel chapter 12. We'll finish there where we started. And while you're turning back to Daniel 12, I'll read to you from John 16, verse 13. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. See, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come, so you can understand the events which are still going to be unfolding, which you can be looking forward to. And the way he does that was by reading the scriptures, by reading the scriptures. Have a look at Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. Daniel chapter 12, and verse 11. And I'll just, I'll just read to you. I'll go to verse 10, which was our main verse for the sermon. Many shall be purified and made white, 
and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Now, what, what can we understand? Let's have a look at verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate, desolate set up, there shall be 1,290 days. So we know from other scriptures in the Bible that the abomination of desolation happens in the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week, of that seven-year period. And the Bible says there, from that time, when you see the abomination of desolation to the end of Daniel's 70th week, when the wrath is poured out, will be 1,290 days. So that's pretty specific. So once you see that the abomination of desolation, you know how many days to the end. Okay, but have a look at the next verse. Blessed he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,335 days. I'll read that again. Blessed he is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,335 and 30 days. So that's 1,335 days. Blessed is the person who comes to that amount of days in, into Daniel 7 this week. So what's that talking about? That's the rapture. So once that Daniel 7 this week starts, which we're not, we may not know when it starts, Okay, we're probably not going to know when it started, but you can know from the start how many days exactly to the rapture, and that is going to be 1,235 days. So therefore, because we know when the abomination or desolation is, that's at that midpoint, and you can look at other verses in the Bible and you can work out how many days that will be into Daniel's 70th week. And then you can work out how many days to the rapture, which is past that, which is actually 75 days. So 75 days after the abomination of desolation is when this number is up when the rapture happens. So once you see the abom abomination of desolation, like, you know it's going to be 75 days. So that's some pretty good understanding. The wise shall understand these things. So when you see these events to start to unfold, you're going to get pretty excited. Now look, start my clock now, 75 days. Let's go soul winning for 75 days. Okay, so we, the wise shall understand. Okay, so the point of this sermon is, is to say, look, we can understand these things. In Jesus' day, people understood. Don't forget the wise men. How did the wise men know? Well, they're reading the word of God. They're reading Daniel. The wise men are coming to meet Jesus. And if we understand from Daniel and Revelation and other scriptures in the Bible, we can understand, well, Jesus is coming back 75 days. Like we're not, we're not date setting because we don't know when it's going to start. But when we know, when we see the abomination of desolation, 75 days and when the sun goes dark and the moon doesn't give its light, well, look out. It's going to happen. So we can understand these things. So we don't want to be deceived by false teaching about the end times. We don't want to buy into like a pre-trib rapture. Look, they're not wise. They're going to, they're going to miss it. They're going to be, well, they won't miss the rapture, but they're going to miss the timing. They're not going to have the understanding that God wants them to have. So let's leave it there. So the purpose of the sermon was to encourage us to get some understanding and we're going to get the understanding from the Word of God. And Jesus wants us to not be in the dark, but to be walking in the light and understand these things. Let's pray.